its 150th Grand Prix. With honours even this year, five wins each to the turbos and the three-litre cars, they could be right, especially as they're in the top six places on the starting grid. After an appalling season of unreliability and crashes, the Renault team upped the boost, fitted the super-sticky qualifying tyres, and ended up with René Arnoux and Alain Prost in pole and second places yet again. Pironi, Ferrari third, Patrese, Brabham BMW fourth, Tombe, Ferrari fifth, and Piquet, Brabham BMW sixth, with Arnoux over seven seconds inside the lap record at nearly 138 miles an hour. Then, the three-litre Alfa Romeos of De Cesaris and Giacomelli, seventh and eighth, followed by Lauda, Rosberg, Daly and Watson, with British Grand Prix hero Derek Warwick, a magnificent 14th in the Tolman. Henton, 23rd, and Jeff Lees, deputising for the injured Nigel Mansell, 24th. But, with Pironi leading Watson in the World Championship by only five points, and a mere seven points separating the next five, the joker in the pack is that turbocharged engines don't like heat, and Paul Ricard is very hot. So, will they last? Well, we'll know soon, but 54 laps here is 195 very demanding miles, and it's by no means certain that they will. the line, but as you can see, it is motoring under its own power, and there are the leaders going into the Ferreri, and now on towards the chicane, and Lecole, and Sampome, and it is the two Renaults followed by Didier Pironi, then Ricardo Patrese, then Nelson Piquet in the second Brabham BMW that you're looking at now, behind him is Patrick Tombe, and now they start this long drag shortly, down the longest straight in Grand Prix racing, which is over 1.1 miles long. Yes, and now we're going to have a, a, our first chance to see the relative power of the different uh, turbocharged engines. I expect the Brabham's to be particularly fast in the early stages. They were very fast in the warm-up this morning. They say that they're going to make a pit stop. I do hope they do. There's Arnoux leading. Cross is in second place. Pironi and it's either Piquet or Patrese. I can't identify here, but definitely... René Arnoux, who has had quite the worst motor racing season in his career this year, and last year wasn't much better, and this race, as I said earlier, to him and the entire Renault team is absolutely critical, and it looks like Patrese up into third position, almost one lap completed, 53 to go at the end. They're coming now into Les Pans, and then La Tour, and that is the left-hander, which leads to Paul, the right-hander, over the bridge, and sure enough, the two turbo Renaults are in the lead, and at the end of lap one, it is René Arnoux leading, Cross is second, Patrese is third, Pironi is fourth, PK is fifth, Tormé is sixth, Daly is seventh, Giacomelli is eighth, and Indy Lauda is ninth position. quarter of an hour to go and qualifying in 14th position is in about that place at the moment so Alain Prost there that you are looking at now with Arnoux in front of him then there is Ricardo Patrese the man who won at uh, Monaco but Patrese of course in this race is in the turbocharged Brabham BMW four-cylinder engine now into the street for the second time expect Patrese to go into second place and the big question now will be whether he's got his turbocharger turned right up and is in fact going to make a pit stop for fuel. The Brabham's have the choice of running with their turbochargers turned well down to conserve fuel and run the whole distance without a stop, or turning their charge, turbochargers up to a lot of boost and uh, making a pit stop. And it's uh, a very interesting calculation and certainly brings a new dimension to Grand Prix racing, the idea of make, actually making a planned stop. Well, now, Piquet is in fourth position, and the Brabham's, of course, have got to get about a 30-40 second lead halfway through the race, which will be uh, lap uh, 27, if they are to be able to beat the turbocharged Renaults and Ferraris behind them, assuming they're all still going. Now, we're coming to the end of lap two, and Ricardo Patrese is gaining on the leader, and through into third position goes Nelson Piquet. Fourth is top, fifth is Pironi, sixth is... 
Patrick Tolbe. 70 is Bailey, 80 is Zaccarelli, 90 is Lauda, 10 is Dukutis, and 11 is John Watson. 12 is Eddie Rosberg. Now, is Ricardo McCabe going to be able to take René Arnoux, the leader, on this, the next third, second lap, as, as he did on the first? Yes, Patrese is perfectly placed now as they come around the right. They've got the left hander to go through. He's dropped back a little bit there, but no, he's well placed for the toe now. He's going to walk past and into the lead. Another question mark hanging over the Brabants is that they have had a lot of trouble with their engines in practice here. They've, they, they had uh, used three or four engines on Friday, had more engine trouble yesterday, and there goes Ricardo Petrese sweeping past the Renault with the draft. The Renault cuts back in again. Arnoux's having another nibble back, but... Uh, is there, and he's going to pull away now. Yes, Patrese, of course, we assume, because we've only been told this unofficially, is running on a half load of fuel and uh, is running on very soft tyres so that he can come in halfway through, refuel and put on another set of very soft tyres. But as I was saying, he needs to build up a lead. Meantime, Teo Fabi, in one of the two turbocharged Tolmans, is out of the French Grand Prix as the leader on lap Three comes through and then Salazar off. Well now, Patrese leading Arnu in second place and with PK right on Arnu's tail is 3.4 seconds ahead and PK is now, as they come up to the Veneri, right with Reni Arnu in second place. Yes, keep that rate of progress up. That was a lap and a half it took him to get uh, over the three-second lead, and that's quite enough. And PK is now climbing all over the back of Arnu. He's, uh, he won't be able, able to overtake until he gets onto the long straight, but he won't mind that because he's sufficiently well placed. And he's got a very good show for the Renault and to go past. Nelson Piquet, number one, the reigning world champion, who, as I have said in the past, decided this year to concentrate on developing the four-cylinder turbo BMW engine developed from the Formula 2 engine, and it looks as though as they come underneath the banner there, Piquet is going to come out of the slipstream of René Arnoux, and he does so, and we now have Brabham BMWs, the car designed by the brilliant Gordon Murray in first and second places, and we are on lap five in this 54 lap race. So here we see again just uh, BK, he got a nice good run with the toe behind the Renault, he just slips out and then he's got the inside line for the very quick corner at the end. The cars are doing something like 200 miles an hour on that straight, the turbocharged cars, as the trace is back for you see going through with quite a big lead. And you look at uh, the distinctive Alfa Romeo, the V12 of Andrea de Cesaris, car number 22. The world champion, the man from Brazil, Nelson Piquet, taking the Courbe de Signe, the long right-hander, now into the Beauce, which is the corner in Grand Prix racing, which has the greatest G-forces of all, and there's Patrese coming, he's slowing right down, Patrese is losing the lead to Piquet. This is sensational because now on lap eight in this French Grand Prix, and look, it turbo has caught fire. The turbo at the back of Patrese's BMW is on fire and he's obviously going to be out. Oh, what a great shame. Yes, it looks like the engine's eaten the turbocharger. Uh, I, I'm hasten to add that I, su I suspect Patrese doesn't realize the car's on fire at the back, but he's probably doing the best thing by keeping it going, hoping that the draft will blow the flames out. But, uh, He's heading round slowly into the pits and uh, they'll descend the body with much, quite, a, quite a little blaze going at the back of the Patrese's car. But it's a great shame to have lost him. Well, let's hope he's got his belt undone so that he can leap out of the car quickly because I think it's going to go up in flames in a very violent way as Nelson Piquet and Patrese is in front of the pits now. His car is absolutely... I wish he could get a shot of it. There it is. Patrese needs to be out of that car very quickly indeed. It really is burning. Yes, he's realised it's on fire now. It's getting pretty warm in there. It's going to get well away. Ricardo yes. Patrese, then, the brilliant Italian who won the Monaco Grand Prix. Unfortunately, the Paul Ricard officials are on it straight away. Um, an idiot marshal has just run right across the circuit in front of the cars. But I can tell you now that PK is leading. That is one turbo gone. And I don't think it's going to be the last of this 
Bradshaw free because this long, long Mistral Street with its 200 mile an hour uh, speed is enormously demanding. And the Brabham BMW team, believe it or not, broke six engines in practice and they are reputed to cost a minimum of £35,000 each so you can do your own mental arithmetic. Nelson Piquet leads. In second place now then is Rene Arnoux. In third position is Prost. So the Renault BMW, the Renaults, which uh, should be more reliable than the Brabham BMWs, which after all are in their first season of racing, are in a very strong position. And here is Piquet completing a lap. It's quite possible that the Piquet and Patrese refueling and retire situation was going to be different. There is Prost in third place. Piquet is leading now by just over five seconds. And there is an enormous gap before the new fourth place.